so we'll continue now to develop additional points on the axial load versus moment diagram for cases when the neutral axis is uh, at or below the, the base of this section so in, in this range from here down to infinity uh, as the neutral axis approaches infinity the uh, the axial load will get closer and closer to this uh, centroid here and then when it when it when C approaches infinity the eccentricity E will go to zero here and it will be under a pure uh, compression so instead of we, we can't use these equations anymore uh, so we'll have to redevelop them now for um, cases below the neutral axis but instead of using force approach we're going to use a, a t entirely different method we're going to use a stress approach using MY over I theory just to give an idea of um, you know another another procedure to follow to, to gain confidence, but it could easily have has been done. It could easily just as easily been done using the uh, force method. Um, so let's uh, let's look at the section now. I have the same geometric section, 300 by 600, and the 10 MPa stress, which is the that's we're assuming that's our maximum stress in, in the linear elastic range for concrete, and the uh, stress in the bottom is is going to be varying. But we could take that stress distribution and uh, make it into two separate uh, stress distributions, a pure axial stress distribution and a pure flexural distribution. And when we sum those two up, it, can, it will come back to this stress distribution that we're assuming. So let, let's, draw the, um, let's draw the axial, uh, the axial, st axial stress distribution. This is a constant stress across the section, and it's uh, it, this is due to a, a, fo a force that's directly at the uh, uncracked neutral axis right there, and it could be uh, described by saying P over A is the stress A transform. And by the way, this area transformed it. Uh, it's the uh, area of the um, uh, steel transformed area of steel uh, plus the area of the concrete, 300 times 600. So w what we can do is we can just take a value of P, anything that's uh, uh, higher than 904.1, because we know that the neutral axis, when it goes lower, it, uh, it's increasing the, the axial load. So we'll take an axial load of 11, 1100 kilonewtons. Eleven hundred kilonewtons. That's one million one hundred newtons divided by this area. So, e to the third divided by one eighty four two sixty six the area, and that gives us five point uh, nine seven MPa. So the stress here is 5.97 MPa, and because it's, it's pure compression, it's the same top and bottom on the section. Now this still doesn't e these aren't equal, so we have to add another stress di distribution to it to um, to equalize it, and this will be uh, a pure moment. Now we'll add to the section. So. And uh, just draw it in like this. And the uh, the neutral axis of this stress gradient for pure flexure will be will coincide right with this geometric centroid. So that it's right about uh, here somewhere. And then we can just draw the. Uh, the stress across the, stre the section. So we don't know the stresses, but we know that 10 uh, minus 5.97 would have to balance it, right? So 
10 minus 5.97 is the stress in the top fibers, uh, 4.03 MPA. And that's really all we need now. I mean, now we know that P uh, E, which is moment, times Y divided by I transformed will equal that stress, right? And we can get the I transformed from uh, tutorial one. We calculated, uh, it, we call it I gross here, but it's really the transformed area of the, of the gross section. So it's 5,660 times 10 to the 6. So we'll just write it here, I transformed 5,660 times 10 to the 6th millimeters to the 4th. So the P we know is 1,100 kilonewtons uh, times 10 to the 3rd. And then E is uh, an unknown. Y we know this distance here, we know it's 305.8. And then we divide by the transformed inertia. And that will have to equal 4.03 MPA. That's 4.03, this stress here. So now we can solve for E. We just take 4.03, we rearrange it, times 5660 E to the 6 divided by the 305.8 times the 1100 kilonewtons, so 1100 e to the third brings the newtons, and e equals 67.8 millimeters, and then that's all you have to do, and then you just keep selecting axial loads arbitrarily, maybe you, go, you use 1500 kil kilonewtons, you get a stress, you subtract the 10 minus that stress, and then you would have a new stress for the flexural, and then you could uh, calculate an E-value that corresponds. So the moment would be uh, just the uh, P times the E, and this E is actually the is really the E prime because we're taking uh, moments about the uh, the uncracked section. So it's it's a, it's a very fast, very uh, direct, straightforward way of of calculating points on this. P of rem diagram for cases only when the neutral axis is is below the section. The force method is actually faster when you're more when you're when you're in this range. So the p value is 1100 uh, kilonewtons times 0 0.0678. That's the e. So the moment is equal to. 74.58 kilonewton meters, and that's basically it. If you wanted to, you could you could further you could calculate what the stress is in the bottom fibers, but it's not really necessary. So in, in the next tutorial, uh, we'll uh, we'll just to calculate some points now below the neutral axis, and then uh, fuse the two. Um, uh, uh, case is the the case where it's in between and then it's when it's below the neutral axis and, and show a plot of, of P versus M and then that'll, that'll be the wrap up for uh, interaction equations in the in the elastic range.